video by asking you a really personal question. When you hear the word humble, do you associate that to the word power or do you associate that to the word weak and pathetic? What is your first impression when I say the word humble or gracious? Do you think that somebody's very powerful or do you think they're very weak? Well, in my case, I'm sitting here at 39 years old. I remember when I was 22, I thought that being humble meant that you're very, very weak and pathetic. And from my perspective, growing up as somebody who was kind of shy and introverted and stuck in my head and I didn't really make an impact, the last thing that I ever would have wanted to hear was that I should be humble. Really furthest thing from my radar at that time. So as I began my journey in social skills, my goal was to be more alpha, to be more high status. And that meant using my voice in a powerful way. Maybe being a little bit obnoxious, a little bit outlandish, eccentric, smashing around energy and making my presence known. Maybe that meant that when I'm talking to somebody, I would really take that higher value position and kind of tease them a little bit, keep them on their toes. And just doing that, I was actually able to expand my social skills tremendously, being more egotistical, maybe a bit more narcissistic, a little bit more cocky, so, so powerful. Now, I remember I was in a conversation with Neil Strauss. He wrote the book called The Game, which I was pleasantly featured. And I said to Neil, what's the difference between somebody who's cocky and kind of egotistical, who's maybe popular, versus say, Justin Timberlake or Tom Cruise, somebody who's at the absolute top of the mountain. What would be the difference in their behavior? And the reason why this came up was I remember I was at Mel's Diner on Sunset Boulevard in LA and I actually approached the table. I mean, this is ridiculous, right? But I wound up approaching the table of Justin Timberlake and Cameron Diaz way back then. And I noted to Neil, I said, he was so friendly, he was so gracious. And I thought that somebody who's really high status would be kind of cocky and egotistical and kind of prove his point. But it was like he was the most gracious person I'd met in my life at that time. So was Cameron Diaz, funny enough. So what Neil said to me was that at the lowest level, we're kind of weak and pathetic and we don't make an impact. And then as we move up, we'll take on more alpha characteristics, be more cocky, more narcissistic. And don't let anybody tell you that doesn't work. That is very effective. Let's not make this video saying being cocky doesn't work. It definitely has its place and can be awesome. And it can also be fun. It doesn't have to be win-lose. It can be a lot of fun and kind of pump some energy into an environment. It's, I actually really love it. But what Neil explained to me was that in his experience, he's, he's a journalist who's written books for, for many really high level people. He said, Owen, at the highest level, oftentimes people are actually very gracious and they come across as humble and they're not trying to brag, but they're actually trying to give other people credit and actually make other people feel good and lift them up. Now, for me in my early 20s hearing that, I thought that's a little bit ridiculous. I can't resonate with that because I used to do that. I was humble and it didn't work for me. But I remember being in the store, it was on St. Mark's in New York and it was this kind of rock and roll store and I walked in that store and I was being really cocky and I was kind of bossing around the person who worked there. It, it, this was an older guy, maybe 55 and, and I was like, oh, go get me this. You know, try this on for me. I don't like that. I was acting very, very cocky and again, I was young at the time. It was around the time that I knew Neil. So, I, I was acting like this, and I remember the guy, this older guy, he said, you know, young man, can I talk to you for a sec? Um, I've served, you know, this celebrity, this celebrity, this celebrity, this celebrity, and we have this kind of clientele, and I've never seen somebody treat me so rude as the way that you're treating me right now. And just sort of hearing his list of high profile clientele that he'd served. It wasn't that I was so wowed by the fact that he'd served different celebrities. That's just him. I mean, that could mean anything. In theory, he could even be lying. I don't think he was, but you know, I'm not gonna read into it that deeply. But at the same time, it gave me a pause. And in my early 20s, it got me thinking about the fact that, is what I'm doing real? or am I playing a facade? Now clearly when I'd be going out and meeting people and dating and networking and whatnot, I had a lot more results being cocky and brash than I did being weak and pathetic and sort of stuck in my head like I had when I was younger. So clearly it was working. But I could see that at a higher level, there was this sort of elusive humbleness and there must have been something that made it work. Why was it that at a higher level, it just worked that much better? Now, Part of my resistance to this, and you may be feeling the same thing as I thought, well, of course, if you're Justin Timberlake, if you're just gracious, that just accentuates your power even more. Oh, Justin, what do you think? Oh, I just want to thank my fans. I want to thank God for the help. I'm so lucky with my mom, <laughs> right? Of course, he's going to say it. it's Justin Timberlake. But from where I'm sitting in my early 20s, that's not going to work for me. And funny enough, as we see so often, whatever you believe turns out to be true. <laughs> so because I believe that that couldn't work for me, I was blind to paradigms, ways of existing, overarching paradigms, in which that could be true. So this was a very, very powerful experience for me. Now, as I proceeded in my journey, what I also noticed was that as I met higher quality people, 
that humbleness actually became almost a form of subcommunication in a similar way that being cocky and funny or being egotistical or narcissistic was at a lower level. So say I went to a bar club and I met somebody who I was attracted to and they're very, very physically attractive, but maybe mentally not at a higher level. What I'm really cocky, I'm kind of teasing them, telling them to leave, busting their balls a little bit, kind of playing with them. That is so effective. They're loving it. They'll chase me. I love you. You're hilarious. Really, really good stuff. And by the way, in, that, in the humble frame that we're going to talk about in this video, it doesn't preclude that. There's, there's absolutely a space for that. But what I realized was that the higher level people, oftentimes they would just sort of look at me and they would be looking through me. They could see that I wasn't really this high level person that I was representing. And my goal in social skills was I wanted to be able to be a peer with the highest level people and not feel as though I was kind of putting on a facade or act in order to be around them. I wanted it to be being not doing. So this paradigm, which I'm gonna to explain to you, it has its own little sets of behavioral characteristics and it can be very confusing. So I think when I show it to you, you'll get a little bit more of a sense of it and it might even tempt you to try it out and it could actually be pretty good results for you. So basically what I saw was that, say that I was being cocky and I said, you know what, I'm gonna marry you and divorce you and take half your money. Get away from me, get away from me. And someone who I'm attracted to would hear that, go, oh, you're hilarious, they jump on me. There was another way of being with higher level people showing that humble side, that grounded side, that ease in your essence, that, that groundedness in your essence, where that connection to your essence, that natural easiness, that ease in your being, an ease with which you walk through the world, that would suddenly become the subcommunication. So rather than you know pushing them away or say having social proof or being popular, or having people chasing you or being dominant or vocal tonality or eye contact, all that dominant stuff, which is ama amazing. I've taught it for years. It's incredible. It's changed my life. Rather than that being the main focus, suddenly it was the pauses that I was taking, a deep, calm eye contact that's not trying to dominate, but just grounded in my own energy. And suddenly that began to be the form of subcommunication. Now, as I went further down this journey, I would look at people like, say, Tom Brady or LeBron James. And LeBron James, by the way, comes in and out of it. And I would see how they talk about their teammates and how they would always give credit to people around them. And then they would always take the blame, whatever, it, even if it wasn't their fault, they would take the blame because they're being leaders. And I would see this general frame of somebody who's truly grounded in their adulthood, in their essence, and I'd be very curious about it. And I would want to become that person. So here's what I discovered, and I'm going to show you the difference in what's going on here so that you can start to see under the surface, and I think it's going to really surprise you. The basic difference is that at the lowest level, you have humble coming from a weak perspective. It's you hiding. Let's be clear here. The humbleness is hiding. In fact, one of my fears in this video is that if I say how you could be attractive by being humble, a lot of people who are at a very low level are gonna rationalize not improving or changing themselves. They're gonna say, oh, I can do that. I'm humble, I must have it, that's great. Oh, I, I, I really resonate with this video. It says that you could be attractive and social by being humble. I'm so humble. No, in most cases, the person who says they're humble, in my experience, is hiding. It would have been how I was humble. I, it was this kind of ho-hum, low vibration, low on the totem pole form of humble. Then as you go up, again, cocky, wild, crazy, untamed, out of control, unpredictable, raw, that stuff is amazing. And never lose that, by the way. No matter if, even if you decide to, make, to take this next step, never lose that. There's such a great place for that. It, it adds value, it adds joy, it adds flavor, color. It's, it's beautiful, okay? That wildness. Everybody loves it, too. They have so much fun with it. But going a little bit higher, that humble aspect, what that's communicating is a connection to your being. It's a naturalness, a breeziness. In effect, what that's communicating is that you are connected to your essence. So as you're sitting there, and here's the key to it, as you're sitting there, you're feeling that beautiful life force going through your body. You're present to the moment. You see how you're merging into the world, and there's a complete, total self-acceptance. It is the ultimate version of non-neediness. It is the ultimate version of gratitude for life that you're experiencing. It's coming from a frame that you've already made it. You have what you need, even, and by the way, even if you don't, even if you're still striving, but it's coming from a frame that even if you're striving, you're awesome now on your journey to becoming even more awesome. And when somebody at a very high level sees that groundedness from you, that breeziness, that becomes the equivalent of, you know, the loud voice or the strong eye contact or the cockiness or the wildness or the rawness. They're seeing this other level. And the beauty of it is you can always kind of dial it down a little bit, get a little bit crazy, push them away, pull them back, get all wild and crazy, all that fun stuff. And it just adds to it even more. But what it becomes is that that is like the spice on the steak 
rather than the steak itself. See, the problem with just being pure cocky or being wild or kind of edgy, high status mannerism and whatnot, is that that becomes the steak. That's the main thing. And it's almost like you're just eating a big chunk of pepper or a big chunk of horseradish. Whereas when you become humble, but from a higher level, then what begins to happen is that that little cockiness, that wild stuff, it just adds flavor. So at first you have no flavor and no substance, okay? Think of it like no steak and no spice. Later, you have this big chunk of spice, and that's a lot better than bland, right? The spice is there, boom! But then as you go up, you've got the beautiful grass-fed ribeye steak. And then if you want to get a little bit wild or crazy or kind of egotistical, narcissistic, which is playful, that egotism, that narcissism, it's very playful, it's very fun. It's, it's a way of playing and kind of throwing around energy with people that they'll enjoy. Now that becomes the spice, which then, Watch the difference in the demeanor. One coming from a lower point, trying to be cocky, you're kind of in apathy, and then you're like, okay, that's not cool. I can't listen to you, right? It's kind of fake, or you get attached to it. It's kind of frenetic and untethered. It's ungrounded, and so you're doing it because you need it, and people will feel that cockiness coming from you, and they know that you need a certain reaction to be okay with yourself, and because they know that you need that reaction to your, that because, because the people know that you need them to, to affirm you're kind of cocky fun. They can feel that you need their affirmation as you're doing it. It strips it of power. The other is when you're in that grounded space and you're, you're kind of like above the fray and then you can just look down at them deep in the eye and you're like, shh, zip it. I'm just kidding, I love you, come here. And it's coming from this completely different space where it heightens the interaction, it creates flirtation, it creates fun and it builds connection and it, now what's happening is that as you're doing it, you, you're not tethered to them. You're not energetically reaching to them. You're grounded. You're not energetically reaching, which then what it does is it shoots up the power of it. It dramatically, dramatically increases the power. So I want you to think about your experience of the world. How are you experiencing the world subjectively? Are you experiencing the world where everything is in the physical and you're thinking a lot about how to control it? How do I control in the physical? And then as you control things, you get good emotions. You're getting good emotions when you're winning in the physical world and you're kind of clasping to it. Or instead of controlling everything using your control muscles, can you engage what's called your release muscles? And what happens then when you release is that that great emotion, and this is what's so crazy about it, you can read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle to understand if you've never read it, is that in releasing, funny enough, that great energy, that happiness that you would have previously gotten from controlling the world and getting the results that you want, it actually begins to inhabit you. Very weird. Now when you're hearing this, I already know what you're gonna say. Well, if I already felt happy, why would I do anything? And I get it, that was my biggest thought as I came into this paradigm. But what winds up happening as you shift from outer to in, and instead from inside to out, is that that great feeling in release by default, just in letting go and getting present, that great feeling is your birthright. It's right there. Then that's almost like tapping into something very spiritual or divine because you'll feel compelled to take action that is an expression of that great state that you have. Think about, it's, it's really actually quite simple. Think about when you're in the best mood, right? You're laughing with your friends and you're like, Daddy, check it out. You wanna tell them stuff. You know, you wanna joke with somebody. Maybe you see someone that you think is attractive and you start teasing them and clowning them. You're feeling so happy, you wanna spread it. No different, by the way, that when you're mad and you just wanna make everybody else mad because you're salty, you wanna make a salty fest. Well, when you go to that inside out approach, instead of needing to control everything to feel good, instead you already feel good and energy's emanating out, you're gonna take even more action. Again, let's just do the, the joke comparison. If you're in a weird mood, and then you have to tell a joke to your friend to make them laugh so that you can feel good. Compare that to when you're just laughing and having fun and it just comes out of you. So that's that release muscle, it just comes out. The difference here is that one mode of consciousness is where 90% of your awareness is in your thinking and in trying to control things and 10% is maybe present to the moment and in your being. And what you wanna do is you actually wanna flip that to where just ideally, maybe if it's not fully the case, because I don't really know if I'm there yet myself, but I mean, I'm not, but I can edge into there at times and I can have some beautiful experiences and I'm definitely getting closer to that ideal every year. It's really fun, that's why I try to share it with you. So instead what you do is that you're already in your good energy 90% of the time and the physical world, it's almost like ripples on top of an ocean, right? The ocean goes so deep. The ocean has depth, it's grounded in itself. And the physical world experience is just the waves. And you can enjoy the waves, and you can play with the waves, but you know that you're not the wave. You're the ocean, you're a part of the whole. You're grounded in your connectedness to the entire world. 
your awareness has shifted from 90% out here and thinking and controlling to 90% just resting in presence and sort of watching the birds as they go by. Maybe even watching negative thoughts, by the way. Oh, I'm in a pain body attack. Negative. That's cool. Interesting. You come back to yourself and you express outwardly. Now, all of a sudden, if you want to be cocky or egotistical, a little narcissistic, it's, it's play. It's spice. Instead of it being this thing that you're doing because you're reaching, you need to control to make someone like you. Oh, I say this crazy thing. Do they like it? Oh, then it puts my mood up. Maybe you wind up going home with someone. You're like, look, I went home with one more person. Isn't that awesome? Another person went home with me. Oh! <laughs> Instead, you're just doing it and it just happens. You don't even care. If you did it, you didn't, you'd be happy either way. But of course, it's going to happen even more frequently because you've outframed the entire paradigm. Think about high school. Right now, you don't care if you're popular or not in high school. So you could go back to high school, you could be popular, you'd be like, hey, what's up? You wouldn't care. You'd automatically be, be popular. You wouldn't have to put any work into it. But back in high school, it was so real, it was such a big deal. And if you could just be popular, it'd be amazing. And in that moment that you're popular, you'd be so excited. The way that you beat that was not by learning every little rule of high school. You know, we could make a video like how to be cool in high school. But the way that you beat it was by solving the problem at a whole new paradigm. You don't want to solve the paradigm at the level at which it was created. You want to go to a new paradigm where you're just enjoying yourself and that's where that humbleness comes in. So notice how humbleness can so easily be confused. It can be confused because at a lower level, you think to yourself, oh, humble, that's just weak. Oh, I'm already like that. I don't say anything. I don't make my presence known. I don't have good eye contact. My voice doesn't project. I'm not funny. I'm bland. I suck. <laughs> I'm sorry, you don't suck, but you know my point, right? Oh, I'm humble. Humbleness to me can be the greatest excuse for a low status person to claim moral superiority. Oh, look at that cocky person making money, going out with all these different people. Oh, it's dirty. Ooh, I'm just humble. I'm more real. I'm the morally superior person who is humble. The meek shall inherit the earth. Ha, ha, ha. That's just an ego-based identity. By the way, as a loser and as the biggest loser, I'm the most humble. I'm the most. That's what ego is. It's that pride, that separation. You need to separate yourself. To me, humble at a low level is equally toxic. And by the way, perhaps even more toxic than someone who's just stuck in this identity of being cocky or trying to hook up a lot of people to find their sense of self. I would actually, I would probably take as a preference a cocky person who's trying to get results in life than somebody who's making an identity of being the most humble and not sucked into the superficial. To me, that's an equally ego-based identity, but it doesn't even produce any result. So recognize that humbleness from here, the fake humbleness, the ego-based humbleness, cockiness, the middle, but then humbleness up here from a grounded presence, from an ease in the world. And that ease, as I mentioned, is gonna have these different sub-communications so that people at a high level will feel it and they're gonna connect with it immediately because people at a high level, they can see right through your facade, they can see right through your BS. Even for me, having studied social dynamics, people approach me on the street every day and I see the facade within seconds. There's nothing that's getting past me. I don't judge it, I just kind of look at it. People at a certain level, when you act cocky from a persona, a fake persona, they'll look at you like this, they'll go, and they're not gonna argue with you. They're not gonna say, oh, you're being cocky, fix it. They're, mental, they're almost like mentality-wise, they're almost just like, blessings. You know, I don't do that, right? But it's almost like that kind of, like, good luck, you know? And they kind of just, I'm resonating this way now. They won't even argue with you. And funny enough, the really problem area there is that then you don't, you wind up missing these people, you don't even wind up connecting with them. And the people who you do connect with are the ones that are cocky. Do you see the, the key here? How this will really mess you up? Because that one person in 10 or that one person in 100, the diamond in the rough, your interaction with them will last like five seconds and it's, and it's very forgettable because they're not even gonna be bothered to be argued with you. They're like, you're on your journey, namaste. They're not necessarily doing that, but that's kind of like the vibe of it. I don't think that every high level person's namaste. Actually, I think that's, that can also be a big ego character. But you're not actually gonna get that negative social feedback from them. So you're not gonna remember them. And then everybody you do connect with when you're being super cocky, well, that's just gonna provide further evidence that you just gotta be this big dickhead. In order to be popular, you just gotta be this big dickhead. You gotta be a jerk. Look, they love it. You know, um, you know, treat it mean, keep them keen. You know, that kind of stuff, right? And a lot of these things, they're not untrue. I mean, there is anybody that tells you that's, that's, that that's BS, they're, they're wrong. They're just being idealistic. But there's a space for it. And what's important to understand is that there's another paradigm of higher quality people and you can easily connect with them with that humbleness, those pauses, that ease that we're talking about here. And then for somebody at a lower paradigm, you can kind of come down for a second, play with them a little bit, kind of mess them a little bit, and then pull them up with you. And that is categorically different. That cockiness, it's there, 
and it looks the same on the surface, but it's the place that it's coming from is completely different. So what we're really trying to get through to you here is this idea that there's another side of things that you might not have considered, another energy. And you don't need to understand this perfectly. It's okay if you don't. You don't need to walk away from this going, I must be humble. I don't want this to become another stick with which to beat yourself over the head that you're not good enough and you need this other thing. That's not what this is about. But rather what this is about is being aware of another form of communication and simply looking at the behavior and following that little trail back to where that originates from and saying, where would that originate from? Why might that be a higher level? How could I benefit from that? How is the way that I'm acting now maybe a sign of lower status or maybe just a paradigm that I'm missing and something to where I could fill in the gaps? And I think what you'll find is that in the same way that when you learn how to be a little bit cocky and funny and a little bit wild and raw, that's a new epiphany for you. It's so much fun, way fun, you gotta do it. This next paradigm is gonna be this other paradigm that you can play in and it's almost like being in a sandbox, kinda of playing with your friends. It's just this whole other paradigm and not only is it gonna get you a lot of higher level connections and really get you connected to the best of the best of the best people because the energy is gonna be beautiful inside. You've had that energetic reversal, the 90-10 instead 90-10. And that humble characteristic is showing that, it's, it's transmitting it, and people are feeling it, there's a power behind it. Again, low level humble. Oh hi, there's no power in me, I'm just hiding, I'm in the center, don't look at me. Cocky, okay, so this is how you do it, what? Shut up! And at another level, just speaking with beautiful communication, energy emanating out, no filter, authenticity, congruence, people feeling who you are, at your core, not reducing the channel between you and them, but them really feeling you and creating a beautiful, beautiful link. And from there, as you're not worried so much what people are thinking of you, you're not attached to it, what happens to your inner power? Your inner power is rediverted to your expression and your, your range. So imagine you're doing a video like this and all you're thinking is, I've got to impress the audience. Oh, 50,000 people, 100,000 people could see this. I got to impress them. Well, now you have to have everything mapped out, every line, every word is so hard. You don't have a lot of energy, your, ener your energy's not flowing. But what if you don't mind? What if you've moved in this paradigm and now you can just do it off the cuff, you don't even need to prepare it and you can just break it down and enjoy it and focus on sharing energy. And funny enough, it becomes easier. A lot of the cocky stuff, it's like you're making it hard. At this level, it's just impossible, life is grim. At this level, it's hard and a challenge. And at this level, it's a collaboration. All of a sudden, instead of competing against other people, it is a collaboration between you and them. You recognize yourself in the other. And even though there's competition in the physical world, there's also an energetic paradigm where we're all one. And what we're doing is we're still competing because you're going out and meeting people. There is competition. It's called evolution. Look that up. If you, I'm sure you have, but look up evolution, study it. It's important to understand evolution. But then looking at how in the collaborative paradigm, we're funneling that energy into a competitive world. That is the intersection where you're at your highest power a very powerful intent to make an impact, to connect, to meet people, to compete, but then letting it go into that collaborative frame where we're all one, all a part of each other, and that is that ultimate security in yourself, confidence, authenticity, congruence, that make people feel power from you and make the highest level people want to associate with you, date you, and be your friend. So I hope this is a basic introduction to this topic and I'm sure I'll have a lot more on it. I hope that you enjoyed the stories and it's something that you connected with. No pressure to try it, just another tool in the toolbox, like just giving you a toy. If you like the toy, play with it. If you don't, I got many more toys for, to come for you. So I'm excited to bring many more toys. And I wanna thank you so much for checking out this video because it's my deepest joy, my great passion to be out here here in Hawaii, Tantalus Mountain, sharing this with you. I live to do this, and I really, really appreciate connecting with you. So I'll talk to you soon. Peace.